What's up guys? Chris Brown, otherwise known as Chain Stasis Wellness, coming at you from Train Boston with another wellness moment and nutrition tip. Today I want to delve into pyramids, specifically nu nutrition pyramids. What's the deal with them? You see them all over the internet. They're telling you this is what you care about the most and then this is what you care about after that and then it gets smaller and smaller all the way up to the peak. You see it all over the place with lots of different topics. Uh, ranging from fitness to nutrition to mental wellness. You see them all the time. People love heuristics and general rules of thumb, not only to sell things, but also for their own help, for their own guidelines. They use it to explain things and it can be very helpful. But are they necessary and are they always correct? Well, let's dig in. To start, let's look at one of the most common visual heuristics uh, that we use in America for nutrition, the food pyramid. Let's go over where the guidelines came from and kind of get into where they are now and then go from there. So in uh, 19 or 1894, the USDA or the Department of Agriculture in the US first came up with some basic guidelines. They said, eat in moderation, eat nutrient dense foods, avoid too much fats and have some portion control or don't eat too much. Seems pretty solid advice, right? Well, it was and it seemed to be working pretty good at that time. Uh, but however, they moved on. In 1943, there was a pretty big thing that happened in our world. You might know what it is if you know your history that affected how we uh, how we doled out our guidelines to the uh, US public. Obviously, around that time, World War II. Uh, this essentially pushed the US to come up with new guidelines. This was based on rations, on politics, uh, and health was supposed to be the focus, but it was only part of the guide. The guide was interesting. It had seven food groups. There was green and yellow vegetables, oranges, cabbage, and grapefruits together. Interesting. Potatoes, other fruits and veggies, okay. Milk-based products, meat and eggs, bread, flour, and cereals, and then the last one's butter and margarine. They just had them in a circle. They didn't really tell you eat this much of this or eat this much of that, but they gave you categories and kind of told you to get a little bit of everything. Right. Interesting. Maybe not better than the previous one. Probably not. But it changed. They had a reason for it. I don't know if it helped, but it was definitely different. <laughs> In 1956, it was changed to four basic groups. So they distilled it down a little bit more, probably to make it less complicated. Veggies and fruits, milk, meats, cereals and breads. OK, so now cereals and breads, we're seeing those are a bigger chunk of things. So they were moving towards more of that. There was probably something happening in our country around that time that drove it, right? Yeah, a lot of agricultural uh, businesses were booming. Uh, they were starting to push their sales on people. So we often see that these guidelines, while, while they're meaning well, they aren't just driven by our health. There were still no RDAs, still no recommended daily allowances, uh, just categories. They still didn't tell you exactly how much to have, just have some of each, but they are kind of leaning towards it. In 1980, the food pyramid was created. I think it was a little off 1980, but around then. Uh, they had a lot more detail on portion control, and uh, they told you about everything in each group, specific types of foods and preparations, that kind of thing. Um, and this is the one that most people are used to seeing. This is the one with the thick amount of grains at the bottom, cereals at the bottom. So this is a base of what you should be eating. And then you move up to your, to your fish and your dairy and your meat and, your, and then all the way up to the top your fats, which you should have sparingly, they used to say. All right. We probably most of you guys probably are, are aware of that one. Again, this seems pretty heavily influenced by agriculture and you guessed it money. Right. So it's not always about our health, at least in part it is. But sometimes even the science driven on what makes us healthy is influenced by money, politics and sometimes even worse. All right. In 2005, this was updated to what's called my pyramid. Uh, you may be aware of this. It didn't last very long. It's basically made all the, the regular pyramid with the layers into these slivers that go vertically and they, they didn't seem to be in order and they had different colors. Super confusing. Turns out nobody really liked it. It, it didn't really help anyone understand anything. <laughs> so it didn't last long. They got rid of it in 2011. Now they're using something called my plate. Uh, you can look it up and just Google it and you'll find it. Uh, but it's literally a circular plate and it divides groups into these little slivers or, or pseudo squares. And it has a little glass with, uh, 
of water or milk there, um, depending on which my plate you're looking at. Um, they're still trying to push dairy on you. That that glass had milk on it. I don't know. I don't know why it has to be part of your daily meals, um, but maybe they think that people need more calcium. Um, but you're still seeing a, a serving of grains, at least a quarter of the plate. So I'm guessing that means a quarter of your daily intake. It's still pretty confusing, right? I mean, most people don't don't look at this and say, oh, I know exactly what to do. They show fruit taking up a quarter of the plate. Does that mean every meal you need that much fruit? Does that mean every day? Uh, is the glass of milk part of the meal or is it on the side? Like, why is it on the side over here? Um, actually, Harvard did a pretty good job of updating and making it a little bit better and their glass is water, like I said. So not everything's created equally, but why is an independent college doing a better job than our, uh, than our government? Just something to think about there, right? Neither one of these are really perfect, but at least they're getting a little bit better. I, I don't want to be too negative about it. My point is, while these are trying, they're often influenced by a lot of things that aren't about our health. We got politics, we got money, we got outdated information. Uh, we got people with these creeds and driving what they believe internally, what's right versus uh, what's actually healthy by science. Um, Nowadays, even the fitness and nutritional professionals are, are still trying to push these pyramids and heuristics on people. Now, it's not always good or bad. It's, the answer is usually somewhere in between, but they're always coming at you and it's kind of confusing and it doesn't lead to thinking about why or how or when, etc. cetera. Um, you'll see in these pyramids, these uh, nutrition pyramids, this again, it's back to the lower more of this higher a little less higher a little less like this matters the most than this than this and it will usually be total calories matter the most macronutrients meaning protein carbs and fats micronutrients meaning meaning um, vitamins and minerals nutrient timing when you eat uh, and then at the top there's supplements the least important thing to worry about or the last thing you need to worry about um, these are usually assuming something about the person reading them. And that's not always the best way to go about things, I find. Um, not everyone's an athlete. Not everyone wants to lose fat or put on muscle. And most people will not be influenced by broad guidelines. So without someone helping the individual, it's really not going to go anywhere. There are people who are just going to look at it and be like, yeah, that's, that's really healthy. I should do that. And then they may or may not, right? But we can all agree that these things are important, right? They're not just there for no reason. They do work, they do have importance in your diet, right? But before getting into the details, I like to have people think about all this stuff in phases, not specifically which one's more important or which one has to come before the others. I don't like the base of the pyramid working its way up, though it can be a good way to talk about things and start that discussion. So number one, what's the first thing that I like to get into? Well, your beliefs and attitudes towards wellness and nutrition are something you need to focus on first. Um, if you don't believe you can achieve something, or if you absolutely hate doing it, you won't. You just won't do it. So you need to address that and understand that, yeah, you can do it. And if you don't believe that you can, we need to find a way to talk through that. Maybe you need to seek someone out to help you. Uh, maybe you just need to understand it better. Uh, either way, you have to not hate it <laughs> because if I'm making you eat food that you hate every day, you're going to eventually stop. That's just human nature. Nobody's going to do something super painful every single day. It's going to drive them insane. Next, I like to tell people this includes your goals in life. If you have poor goals, uh, remember the SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time constraints. If you don't have that in your goal, it doesn't really matter what you do next because these goals are going to flounder around. Um, good examples of bad goals, weight loss to impress others. If you're trying to look good for some boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, that's a bad one. Trying to bench press more weight if you're a golfer. Why do you need to bench press more weight? Who cares? You're not going to be a better golfer. Trying to lose 20 pounds when you don't even know why 20 pounds is your number. Why does everyone have a number on a scale? but they don't know anything about their body composition or their health internally. They don't, they don't know their blood work or anything like that. Why is that five pounds something you need to get off? Uh, they don't ever have the answer when they tell me that number, right? So that will be a bad thing. If you can't address that, that nothing else matters. None of the rest of the pyramid matters. Additionally, if your knowledge isn't up to par, you can't even apply any of the guidelines that we talk about. 
You just need to know things. You don't need to know it uh, at an expert level, but you just need to know. If you don't know how to do it, you won't do it. That just comes down to down to that. And and next, I tell people again. I said it earlier, but seek out help if you need it. Don't just try to do things blindly. Uh, sometimes you need help for motivation. Sometimes you need help um, to get through your own personal issues as to why you hate doing something or or as to why you just don't think you can do something. Uh, and sometimes it's just you need a coach. You need help for exercise. You need help for uh, how to eat your food or how to prepare your food. Maybe you need cooking coaching. I don't know. Um, and along the same lines, you know, humans are highly social oxytocin driven animals. I'm going to talk about oxytocin in the future, but it's it's a hormone that makes us feel good when we do socially driven things. Uh, touch on the shoulder, being near someone and sharing information with each other, things in a crowd, that kind of thing. If you have others doing it with you, not only will your motivation be higher, but your success rates will go up and consistency and adherence go up. And that's my last point here. This is where behavior management comes in. If you won't, for instance, cook food once a week, it doesn't really matter if you have the right calories in mind or if your portions are correct, or even if the quality of your food is awesome. You just won't do anything with it if you don't actually prepare at a time and you're not consistent with it. And this is where we get back to the pyramids. So yes, calories, macros, micros, nutrient timing, supplements, they all matter. But acting like there's a complete obvious hierarchy to it all is kind of short-sighted. Like most things, there's an ebb and flow to all these things, right? And it often is not linear, right? Sometimes you got to go forward, go back, move around, figure it out. You got to fail a little, learn, and reapply. Supplements can matter a whole lot more if you're very deficient in something you actually really need and you can't easily get it through food, right? So why would they only be this tall little part of the pyramid if it's really important right now? It's just kind of like a medication, right? Doctors don't just say, hey, work on your nutrition and then we'll give you the medication. Sometimes you need it right now. So the important shifts around. Do you see what I mean? Um, macros and micros tend to settle out pretty darn well when you're eating whole foods. Uh, just look at the nutrient profile of meats, eggs, and potatoes. They're pretty well rounded just naturally, as long as they're not tampered by uh, human means, by processing, right? Uh, human animals, they tend to not overeat when eating whole foods, right? That takes care of your calories. We got micros, macros, and calories taken care of uh, if you're just eating whole foods because we're, we're satisfied, we're full, right? Those foods naturally make you feel that way if you're eating unprocessed foods again, all right? And when we eat this way, our bodies just tell us when we're hungry, that settles the nutrient timing, right? So we've already checked all those bases just by eating actual whole foods, all right? We didn't have to go through this hierarchy or count out our calories. We didn't have to stress you out or tell you you're wrong or bad for doing certain things or you can or cannot do it. We just ate whole foods, right? So while these pyramids, they can be helpful, be wary of being indoctrinated by any one guide. Focus on feeling well and being well. Yeah, that means the chain links of wellness. Focus on your chain links. In this case, mental wellness, knowledge, and social support can be the most important part of your nutrition goals. All right, so try not to become too caught up in any one thing, but focus on yourself. Focus on what you need to get to the next step in your goal, right? Don't focus on these general broad guidelines that everyone else is telling you you need. You know what you need. And if you need help, you need to get help, all right? That's all I have for you guys today. Great luck on your nutrition journeys. And until next time, be well. Thank you, guys.